in the early 90s, uh, I had a little conference and gave a talk about um, our novel achievements in AI. But nobody was interested in it. There was just one single person at this conference. A young lady. Um, I said, young lady, it's uh, very embarrassing, but apparently I'm going to give this talk just to you. And she said, um, OK, but uh, please hurry. I'm the next speaker. <laughs> However, the same old algorithms that we published back then, today they are on your smartphones. And suddenly you have things such as ChatGPT. Does anybody know ChatGPT? Yeah, many do. And the G and the P and the T in ChatGPT, they have their roots in, in what we did around 1990, 1991. And suddenly you can do all kinds of really cool things with it. But before we talk about that, um, let's just talk about how AI is really making human lives longer and healthier and easier. 2012, for example, our AI was used in, by my team to win a competition which was about cancer detection. Cancer detection. So we had slices to the female breast, and, uh, and there you saw in the microscope certain cells. And then some of the cells were dangerous. Mitosis cells, they are called. So they are pre-cancer stage cells. And then others are harmless. And normally you need a human trained histologist to say, harmless cell, harmless cell, potentially dangerous cell, and so on. But then our system, uh, 2012, was able to win against all the other systems from industry and academia. And it was just a deep learning neural network which knew nothing about histology. But we trained it on lots of data. And we also, we don't know nothing about histology. But we trained it on lots of data. And then it was just better than all these competing systems. And today, the same thing is used in thousands of applications, not just for uh, cancer detection, but also detection of plaque in the arteries, in CT scans, and all kinds of um, applications in healthcare like that. What already has happened is that um, our AI has really broken down the linguistic barriers between nations. Fifteen years ago, when I went to China, I had to show the taxi driver a picture of my hotel. And today, he holds, me, he holds his smartphone into my face and, and he says something in Mandarin and, and comes out in English or German. And then uh, I speak back and we have a conversation, you know. So not only the communication between individual people has become much easier, but also the communication between entire nations. And... Um, there are so many additional examples along the lines of these sustainable development goals where our AI is being used to, to improve the world in many ways. So the United Nations has this list of 17 sustainable development goals. And you take any of them and um, you just use Google Scholar to find papers on how our AI is being used to achieve some of these goals. You will find lots of stuff. So, for example, um, uh, our techniques are being used to predict drafts or take satellite images and predict crops and predict how many people are going to burn down parts of the Amazon from um, satellite and drone images and predict air quality. So many people around the world are suffering from really bad air quality and you want to be able to monitor that and track that uh, in order to find ways of um, improving the air quality. Or, generally speaking, everybody talk, is talking about global warming, and there are many ideas how to reduce it. Maybe not stop it, but reduce it. The best thing is, we haven't seen nothing yet. Because in the next 30 years, if the trend doesn't break, we will gain another factor of a million. And everything that we find impressive today will seem ridiculous 30 years from now. And people will look back and will say, look, they were so impressed by, you know, la large language models and chat GPT. And they will smile at how naive we were. And so what we are currently witnessing is not just another industrial revolution. It's something 
that's going to transcend civilization and humankind as we know it. It's something comparable to what happened 3.5 billion years ago when life emerged. In the early 90s, uh, I had a little conference and everything is going to change. And it's a privilege to witness the beginnings of that and to um, contribute something to that.